Okay. Well, hello everyone. My name is Herman Leiva, and I will present Montage, um, the work that I did at Ex situ with my supervisor, Michel Boudon Lafon. So, interaction designers rely on multiple materials to prototype, um, but still to date, the most common one is pen and paper. Pen and paper has several benefits that we know. It's inexpensive, it doesn't require technical skills, and it's easy to throw away when we want to change, change something. But designers also use digital tools to translate these hand-drawn sketches into refined mockups. In terms of prototyping speed, if we compare pen and paper and tools like Photoshop or Illustrator, pen and paper is much more rapid. But at the same time, if we analyze the dynamic behaviors that are prototyping, both of them are only supporting static prototype. There are some tools that help to translate these static prototypes into more dynamic ones. For example, POP let designers take pictures of paper prototypes, create hotspot areas, and connect them to create click-through interactive prototypes. But the interaction is only limited to screen-based transitions. In the same way that POP helps pen and paper to be more interactive, we have other tools like InVision, Flinto, Flash, to do the same for digital mockups. And even more, designers use repurposed tools like Keynote or PowerPoint to use the transition to illustrate small screen-based animations. But if we want to go higher in this y-axis, we need to go to tools that rely in video editing or programming like Framer, for example, that is a text-based prototyping tool, or Origami, that is used in patch-based visual programming. If time and money is not a problem, we could use high-budget video prototyping. The difference between video and the other techniques is that not only prototyping the interface, but putting that interface into context. So uh, an early example of this technique is the Knowledge Navigator uh, from Apple in 1984. So in this example, we have a professor interacting with an intelligent agent. Um, then the, there is green screen and different techniques to show how the interface reacts. This five minutes video cost $60,000 and it took six weeks to, to produce. Right now we have better techniques and I will show you another recent example that is Project Glass when they were doing these new augmented reality goggles showing the interaction in context was really important. So they created this uh, animation to show how the user will experience, for example, uh, a problem in the subway to change the route to their destination. But if we want to go further into the rapid prototyping area, we can take the benefits of high budget prototyping to do low budget prototyping. In low budget prototyping, instead of using video editing, we try to use art supplies transparency, a paper, to illustrate different interaction techniques. In this example, the designer is showing how to do a lens interaction. So, as I mentioned, some of the benefits of low-budget video prototyping include designing not only the interface, but putting the interaction in context. It's a quick and dirty approach, so we don't require technical skills, the equipment is simple, and video is a medium that is really easy to share. But when we want to do more dynamic things, things get a little more complicated. So in terms of paper, if we want to show two different states of the interaction, we need to reproduce the same paper prototype in a small and a big version. And if we want to make a change, change the color, change the shape, we need to redo the whole video. And if we want to do something even more dynamic, like the Octopocus technique, that is a technique that helps users to show the gestures that are available so, for example, here we can see that the user wanted to do a question mark gesture, but we can see there are one, two, three, four gestures that are available, and when the user is doing the question mark gesture, the other ones are disappearing. So, in low-budget prototyping, designers could, for example, put this interaction into context. Imagine that we want to prototype this technique in front of a profile picture that will be shown in a social media application. The designer takes a Kodak uh, pictures and uses a theatrical prop on top of a phone and then draws four stages of the interaction over transparent paper. 
Then with the help of another designer that is recording these interactions, they can create a rough stop motion animation to illustrate. Now, the problem with this is that the dynamic nature of the interaction is not well represented. It's kind of sloppy, and again, if we want to make changes, we need to reshoot everything again. And that's exactly what I should say. Um, so this will force the designers to either sacrifice the consistency throughout the video or use post-production to really change everything that was modified. So the goal of what I'm trying to do here with montage is to go to the top right area of, oops, sorry, to the top right area of this graph. How can we get the benefits of high video prototyping with digital objects and the speed of low budget video prototyping? So Montage is a system that allows you to do this by using green screen technology and digital sketches. So this is the result of how this technique will look like when you create it with Montage. So how do we do this? We have a user actor that is interacting with a green area or a phone, and then we have a camera that is recording these interactions. A wizard has a wizard camera parallel to a paper prototype that is recording everything that it does in that prototype and send it to a canvas where the wizard can modify and combine both um, information. Okay, so how does it work? The user camera and the wizard camera are just smartphones and the canvas is a tablet device with a stylus. And the, the user cam, it's video streaming all this information to the tablet device and the wizard cam does the same. And after the live session, these two cameras are sending a movie file that it will be used to create the final prototype. When an actor enters into the scene with a green area, the system detects this rectangular area and creates a perspective transformation of the interface over the green area. This happens live and also after recording. So when you introduce an element in the paper prototype, it will appear automatically in the interface and also in the final composition. But sometimes you want to add other elements to the interface, so we allow to have sketches over the final composition to describe like a uh, speech bubble or also notifications, and in the interface to create widgets like buttons, menus, and so on. So we have different components that are composed here. So the sketches plus the paper movie will create the interface movie, and the perspective transformation plus the green screen replacement of the context movie and the interface with the sketches over the final composition will create the final movie. So how, how does it look like? So in this example, we have the, the profile picture represented in a po paper prototype that we will put below the wizard cam. And then the user actor will bring a, a green area that will serve as the context where the prototype is replaced automatically in the canvas. So now we will focus only on the canvas and I will show ca how can we reproduce the technique that I, was sh I, I showed you before. So on the right we have the wizard camera preview and on the right we have the user cam preview. And the replacement in this case, it, it, it's distorted because the user actor is grabbing the phone in portrait mode. So we provide a viewport tool to let the, the wizard select the area of the paper prototype that should be replaced. Now, how can we create the different interface elements? We move the recording at the desired position and we can sketch directly on top of the wizard cam preview. The sketches appear down below in the list that is really white. Um, and then also when you draw, it will appear on the left in the user cam. Now, if we want to create sketches in relation to the user inputs, we'll also provide a ghost image of the intersection of the user interaction with the green area. In this case, we want to do the uh, inking feedback while the user is uh, drawing the question mark gesture. So we press play, and at the same time that the video is playing, we will draw on top of the wizard cam preview. In this, in this way, the system is saving all these input events to create an automatic keyframe animation. And finally, we need to make the gestures that are not selected disappear. To do this, we select, we go to the point of the video that we want that to start happening, 
we select the sketches that need to disappear, and with the slider at the bottom of the screen, we make the other gesture go away. So in this way, we, we, we achieve a dynamic demonstration of the interaction on top of a green screen. But what happens if we want to use the same interface in different contexts? For doing that, the green screen is the glue that can connect a stationary context like the smartphone on top of a desktop or the smartphone used in a mobile environment or even any other screen-based device. So we can grab the same interface and replace it on these screen areas. So because the system is mobile, we can have a camera following a user walking in the wild. In this case, I have a smartphone with a green area that I will replace with the previous interface. So I, I'm using exactly the same movie as before, and I'm replacing it in, in this context. And I also add in some feedback. For example, here I'm using the question mark to block this person from my social media. And I can also use the same, um, let me put that again. I can also use the annotations on top of the context to show a notification. In this case, I'm receiving a message. I'm seeing that uh, is this person. And in this case, um, the, the designer realized that having interaction happening on top of the smartwatch is not a wise idea. So in this case, he's deciding to do a skin-based interaction. And I didn't show you that. So we have the notification, we have the interface, and the interaction is happening over the skin. And right now, I only show you examples of touch-based interactions, but with this system, you can prototype other interaction techniques. So for example, we have an example with proximity interaction. By using a sticky note that is green, we can attach it to a coffee machine to illustrate an augmented coffee machine. So we have a paper prototype with different stages of the interaction, and then the wizard can use sketches to illustrate that the cup is uh, that the coffee is being made, and also that the coffee machine is, is, is pouring the coffee in the cup. So in the final composition, the batch is recognized by the system. The system automatically starts uh, making coffee, and if the user doesn't press cancel in the next three seconds, the coffee is being made. We can also prototype multimodal interaction. So we have a green screen um, and a user that is recreating the foundational work of put that there. So the user will say, create a triangle in the position that she's pointing, or saying, create a green circle on top of the triangle. And then the wizard is representing the system response by sketching. And then by pointing to a shape and saying, put that there, the wizard can move that shape and put it in the right position. And finally, the same techniques can be used to prototype augmented reality. So by having sketches on top of the context, we can, for example, show that the system is recognizing this pillow and the camera is hidden on the headband. And if we want to prototype, for example, sorry, and if we want to prototype, for example, a hand menu, we can add sketches on top of the fingers. So we draw four options, and when the user selects the second option, we can highlight that one. And after that, we can show that the system, for example, is tracking the, the user gestures. In this case, the user is doing a pinch and then is selecting the size of the new pillow that he, he will copy. Now, if we want to make a pillow appear, we need to press pause on the recording. Oops, sorry. We need to press pause on the recording, then a new pillow appear, and then we resume the recording. Um, and all the previous techniques that I mentioned with green screen, we, we can still be combined. So in this case, we are prototyping a, a call from, from an angry boss. So then the user is being yelled at, and then he's surprised. Um, so in summary, um, our goal was to create a prototyping tool uh, to rapidly um, illustrate highly dynamic interaction. So we presented Montage. Um, Montage combined green screens and digital sketches to quickly create composable and also editable videos. So the composable parts helps reuse and the editable part lets user reuse reshooting. And we should also show how to support multiple interaction styles, touch-based, ubiquitous computing, multimodal interaction, and augmented reality. Future work. Um, we want to improve the current state of montage, uh, in particular the green screen tracking. Right now it's limited to rectangular areas. Um, we want to study montage with professional designers. We want to support other interaction styles that are more based in digital 
only, so for example, virtual reality. And we want to also explore how to integrate montage in processes that require more evolutionary prototyping. So how to move from video to interactive prototypes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul Senti Adobe. I can't tell you how much I love this work. Um, Thank you very much. Have you considered, like, having created one of these and now you've gotten some sort of buy off, can you then trend, utilize what you've done to make a more final, polished version without going back and starting from scratch? That's a good question. I think it's possible. Um, so, we are exploring how to make more refined prototypes. In fact, we have other tool that is based on that. Um, we can talk later. But at the same time, if we, if we show something that is too high fidelity, sometimes it hinders the, the prototyping process. So it, it's really tricky to say when we need to transition to, to the more refined one, but definitely it's an area that we are exploring. Really nice work. Thank you. So, of course, you're benefiting from the ancient technology of using green screen, uh, but you've got one green screen, and if you wanted to have multiple ones, maybe you'd have a green screen and a blue screen, but that you kind of run out pretty quickly, right? Um, on the other hand, in AR, there's a long tradition, and a lot of effort has been put into optimizing algorithms for tracking um, uh, fairly simple fiducial uh, markers. So have you thought about actually having the phone screen, rather than showing simply a green screen, showing a fiducial marker which has known pixels, which would enable you to replace the same way you can with green, but be able to have lots and lots of different displays and just stuff in the environment uh, that would be able to be overlaid, like a nice size uh, little poster, kind of sort of the shape of a pillow that when you put it in there, it looks like a pillow. Um. We, at, at the beginning, we explore how, how to do this with fiducials, mm -hmm. um, but we want to make it mobile. So if, mm -hmm. if you have two designers with two smartphones and a tablet, uh -huh. you, you can work with it. Um, but for example, we wanted to use sticky notes so yes. they don't have the, the fiducial there. So what we are evaluating is using more information. For example, uh, mm -hmm. smartphone devices now have deaf information. Mm -hmm. So basically with this extra information, we can have a more refined detection of these areas. Right. And in terms of the multiple green screen, it's completely doable to have more than one, even if they are green. Mm -hmm. What we are interested in is how, this, as you say, this technology is old, and, and generally you need a studio that has a really good lighting conditions, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of limitations in that area. So it would be nice to explore better ways of doing this. But with different producials on the screens themselves, you wouldn't need to carry along something else and you'd be able to distinguish among them as they move relative to each other. Yes. Um, yes. Um, but we wanted to also support things that are not um, actual devices. Mm -hmm. So when we want to prototype someone with a, a green space in his T-shirt uh -huh. right. or, or like a, a hat. So we want to keep something that is flexible, but you are completely right. We could use the smartphone. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? We have time for a few more questions. Please step up to the mic. Hi. Uh, this is too high. Uh, Sarah Soleri from Fraunhofer. I just have a question. Um, really interesting presentation. What I felt, and I may be wrong, please correct me, is that it's more Wizard of Oz, less prototyping, actually. And what you get in the end is the video of how it would be, right? Exactly, yes. Um, so I'm just wondering if you actually use it to evaluate users or something, there's always a matter of how clean the wizard's reactions would be while the user is actually um, doing or dealing with the system. Have you considered that part? Um, so Wizard of Oz is, is great, but it has some, some problems. And one is, as you say, the wizard has a lot of uh, workload to react quickly to what the, the actor is doing in this case. So what we added here is that we can record the user interactions and then, so for example, when, when, when you have an actor doing some kind of gesture, the system records that and then the wizard can work on top of the video. So he can go 
back and forward, and in a relaxed manner, he can sketch as precise as he wants. In here, I try to keep the rough uh, aspect to keep it as a low fidelity, but surely it could be highly precise. So because this is a video, he can go really, he can zoom in on the video, draw exactly what he wants to show up in every place. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.